Let's dive more into Grasshopper and let's build um, some a ring, a parametric ring. So often what I do in Grasshopper, you could build everything parametrically. So with memory and uh, uh, everything with math. But often you can also build a little bit here do your magic here and come back here and that's what I do a lot because it's just easier uh, to learn easier to understand so I'm um, I went circle I type zero so it's at the center I hold shift so it's straight and I could put a dimension but I'm just gonna eyeball it and I do another one right click zero and that one will be a little bit smaller and I'll move it down a little bit and that new one I'll move it out and we'll rotate it just a hair, like maybe minus one degree. Actually, it's the other way, uh, plus two degree. Yeah, something like this. MI for mirror, zero for the center, hold shift, and we're good. Perfect. So this is the three curve that I want to bring into Grasshopper. I could take one curve node like we did, and have the three but I want to control them one by one so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna double click type curve and I want three copy of this curve so in grasshopper the way you do this you click and then hold click and hold I don't know why it didn't work um, so now we've got three curve input we select one right click set one curve um, I usually like to name them, so here you can name it left or right, left curve, and click here to see it, otherwise it won't show up. So the middle one, center curve, make sure to hit the pen bucket. And here, right curve. Perfect. So now, what I want to do is divide, rebuild, resample each curve. So I can double click, get a divide curve like we did in the previous section, and click and press all to get three of them. To connect you just drag, to disconnect you drag back. Or you can right click and go disconnect too. Uh, sorry, to disconnect you hold control and you click back. If you want to con connect multiple to the same one you hold shift. That's how you do it. Uh, it looked like I didn't hold shift. But anyway, here I want them to have their own divide. And uh, what I'll be doing now, I want the, them to have the same number of points. So I'll do only one slider. I double click and I go 10 minimum, crocodile uh, 120. I don't think we'll need that much. And you c N is the count, if you remember. So that's the number of points. So now you see we just built a tool that can resample. So what I want to do, it's connect this point with this point with this, a three point arc. So we double click, arc three point, this one. And it has three inputs, so it's very easy. Point A, B, and C. And now as you can tell, it's working. And even if you were to grab this circle, you see move that point, it will update. Uh, this is attached to this. So um, now to give this geometry we can use a pipe. There's also a pipe variable that we'll see later on. And it's pretty simple. Uh, this is the curve. This is for the radius. So a radius is usually pretty small. So we go 0 0.1 to 1.5. We could double click and name this radius. And uh, count is good actually. 
plug this here. So you see now we can actually play with it. Now the end of the ring here, it's open. So here E means N and if we over it say if you use 0 it means none. If you use 1 it's flat and 2 is round. So we can do a slider from 0 to 2. That's it. You could call that end, cap N. and uh, then connect it. Like this. So now if you go 0, 1, 2, you see the N is rounded. Perfect. Uh, I think we have too many. I'll go maybe 35, 39. It's touching a little bit too much. Here we go. It select those three, copy, and place them here. Control V. And the new one, you can press Control G to group them, so you know it's the thickness of something else. Okay. So now that one could be smaller. Voila. And uh, you can right-click and name this uh, left thickness. Voila. Now you can paste a new one. And uh, sorry if it looks a bit messy. Control G. You could also stretch it a bit and do the middle one. So that's the middle one and we'll go at the same point too. Voila. We could name it too. And finally the last one. Control G. Move move this here. I hope I haven't lost you here. It's actually a very simple tree. And I put it here. Voila. So now they all have and I'm going to bring this to point 2. Voila. Maybe it'll be easier if I put them here actually. So this is the thickness of my three first circle and this is the thickness of the... I could also... it's good to organize things well as you can tell so you can later on understand what's going on. So we could uh, easily group this together go control G that's the thickness I hope you're still with me so this is great but what about if I wanted uh, those one to be smaller in radius than those one uh, so I will need smaller value here and higher value. What I can do is do a delta, uh, the difference. So a quick trick is to create a point here and to measure the distance between the point and this one and the point and this one. So if you move the point down, the distance will be greater on the top and less on the back. And you can use that to drive the radius. You'll see it's not that hard. So let's create a point in Rhino point and let's put it the center zero perfect here to bring the point you just go point and you bring it so you right click like we did set one point and you pick this one or you select it and you right click here same thing uh, then we want to measure the distance so distance and we want to measure the distance between this point and the center curve, so this one. We need to take the rebuild because this, the point can change with the rebuild. So if you look, this already work. If we go get a panel, uh, right now they're going to be all the same because it's at the center. But if I move the point down, then it's going to be greater here and smaller here. You see if I scroll down? It goes up to 4 and go back to 6. So 
what I could do here, uh, the only problem we have, the number is too big. So I can um, multiply the number to make it smaller. It's just too big for a, a radius. So multiplication something like this. Here. So what I can do now is create a slider that goes from 0.05 to something big. Uh, 10.0. And now if I use this with this and use a panel to show you it's much smaller so I could increase this and get larger number so now we could use this instead of this one so we're just replacing the radius and now if I increase oh too much so maybe it was the other way decrease voila as you can tell the radius is bigger here than here so what I need to do is move this down even more voila so now you can really see it and it's still a bit too big what I could also do here it's double click on this um, slider here and change the range so I could say the max should just be one that will make my life easier so now I can be much more precise. Voila, something like this. And remember, we could uh, still grab this. We could grab those two points. We could uh, scale them. Move them out. Move them up. We could do a lot of things. Now, when you are happy with this, oh, I think I went a bit too much. When you are happy with this, I think it's still too high, and a little bit too wide. Uh, we could go back to uh, the number here and put less or more so here I'm just goofing around I'll put actually quite a bit um, but yeah if you think about it that definition is actually not that um, complicated here you can also change to low quality or high quality if you wanna if you have a good computer and wanna see a nice display uh, when we are happy, as you know, you right click and we back to this. Say OK. And now we can uh, easily select all of those and mesh them so I can go to Modo. Voila. Uh, 